Okay, so today uh, is the second class uh, laws of Shabbos, and we start in this uh, Hafiz Chaim lesson today. So we decided to go directly to the to the first day, right? So it's page fifty, basically, right? So so on top is the, is the name of the sefer, the, the name of the book. So basically, they split uh, the book in two days. I mean, in one day they learn from two books. One okay. from Sefer Hafiz Chaim, it's it says on Tam, and second on the right is Sefer Shmiras Chavashon. It's a different book, but uh, <clears throat> very interesting. Like uh, on the left, Hafiz Chaim, it's a law, and um, on the right, uh, Shmiras Chavashon, it's basically all of the proofs from the from the oral and written Torah. So okay, okay. so let's start. So Loshen um, Chora, a definition. Loshen Chora, literally evil talk, is defined as information which is either uh, derogatory or potentially harmful to another individual. So, derogatory or harmful. Okay. So, it, it, it is uh, whatever this information, information is the truth, it's not lie. Right? Okay. The derogatory statement about someone is Loshen Chora. So somebody is fat, some somebody is uh, clumsy, somebody this that. Okay, so it's it is true, hundred percent, but it's forbidden, even if it will um, definitely not cause a person any harm. So I mean, he knows that he's lazy. He told everybody he he's lazy like uh, yesterday. Still, we're not allowed to to say it. Okay, one second. Okay, um, no Any harm. To focus on the shortcomings of another person is a, a itself wrong. Okay. So that's I yeah, think. Isn't like isn't isn't like laziness a sin, right? So if somebody's lazy, right? Because from what I heard is you're supposed to hate the sin, not the person, right? Yes, so yes, correct. Yes, focus. yes, yes. So you can focus on saying, okay, you can hate the laziness about the person, but you can't hate the person, right? It's a laziness itself is not a sin, but it's going for sure. It's going to lead to a sin. To lead it to it, okay. For okay. sure, yes. So I mean, um, the thing is, is so if you, if you try not to help a person, so you can you can talk about his uh, negative traits, but okay. uh, the, there is a way to to talk uh, to that person. We're going to discuss. Okay. And this we, we're going to give all of the details. Okay. Uh, a statement, a statement that could potentially bring harm to someone, be it financial, physical, or psychological, or otherwise, is loshan haram. Even the information is not negative. For example, we can say here that somebody is lazy. So if you if you tell me that this guy uh, uh, is lazy, okay. So I mean, maybe okay. Well, do do I do I care if he's lazy or not? I, I don't care. Right? But if you tell he, somebody and uh, uh, to, to a potential employer that this guy is lazy, oh, that's that's a, it's a game changer. So now it's uh, he can uh, lo lose his parnasa, his uh, livelihood. That's a big difference, right? So yeah, I'm in. It's not allowed in in any case, but uh, we, we just uh, show like a different uh, uh, like uh, effects. It should be noted that the term Loshan Hara refers uh, um, refers even to the to the true statements, which are derogatory or harmful, derogatory or harmful. So, but I'm not sure why they say even it's always true. So, if it's not true, they call it Motzi Shemra. It's different. Uh, but we we're going to learn. Uh, I think they're saying even. To, oh, okay, you, you don't know why they're saying even to true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Statement. Even even to true. So uh, Loshan Hara is a true statement. I mean, or or at least you see them as true. So in in your mind, you you see that person as a, as as a liar. You see that person is a, as a lazy person. So it's not like you're trying to make up things about him. Yeah, if yeah, you, yeah. if you lie and if he's not lazy and you you just want don't uh, somehow you you don't like the person and you don't want him to get that job. So you would say to to his potential. Well, ah, I know this guy. I went to school with him. He's such a lazy bum. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's not Loshan Hara, it's a Motsi Shemra, because it's uh, yeah, different story. Negative statements that are untrue 
or inaccurate, a term Hatsaras uh, Shemra, slender. Okay, we're going to uh, we're going to get to them. Day thirty one. All right, so let's stop here. All right, so we go back to our laws of Shabbos, <clears throat> and we on page. So as as we found out uh, yes uh, last time, so we have a little different text. So if it's a little different, so you tell me. I'm yeah. going to correct my book. <laughs> okay, so we're on page number six, Radiance of Shabbos, in chapter number two, and the title is uh, Who is Obligated to Mitzvah of Lighting Candles? Okay. Right. So that's page 11 on my thing. Yeah. Oh, page 11. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm not going yeah. to say pages. Okay. 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 So the obligation. The obligation to light Shabbos candles applies to all adults, mem members of the household. However, the sages did not require each member of the household to light the candles, but rule that one member of the household can light the candles. The entire household fulfills the obligation collectively. So, and same, I just want to add, so, same apply for other things, right? So, one person can say Kiddush, for example, and include everybody in his uh, in his uh, Kiddush. Or, or he, one, one person can say, uh, bracha on bread, right? And it, it would include everybody. So that's uh, that, so, that's common. Uh, what if I'm a guest in somebody's house? Do I ask them to like include me in the thing? Okay, so basically, when when you want to be included in somebody's bracha, mm -hmm. so there are uh, there are two things that must happen. Must. So he has to have in mind to include you, yeah. and you. You and you must have uh, have in mind to be included. Right. So if if one one of the things uh, is not happening, so you you're not included. So basically, okay. like for example, in my house, I include I I, I have in mind always to include everybody. But in right. case somebody wants to say or some guests, so I I don't I don't take offense. There is not no no, no problem whatsoever. If he wants to say his own brach on bread, he can say it. Right. Okay. So it's uh, basically it's up to you, but most of the time, like I would say, like most of the people, they would include the, everybody around around the table in their bracha. Right. I'm not sure okay. why they would not include it. Okay. Okay. So basically, one person from the family can include the whole household. Okay. It is customary for uh, for the women, uh, uh, for the woman of the house to light the candles. And there are several reasons for this. A, since a woman are in a home more often than their husbands, and generally... Uh, I, I, I do not have... Uh, okay, that's on my next page. Okay, all right, hold on. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Since the Sorry, woman... That's on my next page. Mm -hmm. Since the woman of the home is more often than their husbands, and generally look after the household matters, the midst of kindling uh, of the lights uh, um, um, devolved, Upon the mistress of the house, which is makes sense. So she she knows. I mean, uh, when when the candles some some men do do not know where when the candles are. You know? so wait, what is your so since women are typically in the home more than their husbands, they generally look after household matters. The midst of kindling the candles is their domain. Yes. Right? Okay. So okay. a little different text, but uh, same. Yeah, I just same. want to make sure. Yeah, yeah but yeah. pretty much same thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So basically they. They're in charge. So in, in all other things, in uh, most, or I would say all other things, it's preferable for men to do it. But in yeah. this, in candle, uh, lighting of the candles, it's preferable for a woman to do it. Okay. Right. Um, so, uh, okay, B. The measure states that Adam was uh, a hala of this world. world. So he was a hala. But it was the light of this world. Uh, the, right? the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The light of this world. I apologize. You're right. He he was the light <laughs> of this world. When uh, Hava pursued him to sin, she thereby extinguished the light in this world. So basically, he was supposed to live forever. No, not him. Or they were supposed to live forever. And she, when when they sinned, so Hashem said, "Now, now you're going to die." Okay. He lived a long life after this, but basically. Uh, by her actions, in a, in some sense, she extinguished that light. Okay, uh, she was therefore assigned to mitzvah of lighting the Shabbos candles to atone for the light that she extinguished. 
So which is a very logical explanation, right? So she she in extinguished the light. So now she she has to fix her her aveda, her sin. Right. Nevertheless, it is custom for a man to join is a mitzvah too by preparing the uh, the candles for lighting. Okay, but uh, men are also obligated to light. So for example, if you're single, that <laughs> that that's what you must do. I mean, uh, you, you you light your own candles. Right. Right, but uh, in all of the mitzvahs, so even uh, if a man is not obligated somebody else, so it's better to to be part of that mitzvah. So mm -hmm. he, he's saying that man has to take a part. So prepare the candles. So that, that's what I do. I I clean the, the 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 wax from all the candles and put on new candles, pour mm -hmm. oil and stuff like that. So and, and uh, I mean that that's the part, my part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two. The woman uh, of the house, if, if the woman of the house is not home, the husband should light the candles rather than one of the children. So it's very important. If either, and neither uh, of the parents is home, one of the children should light the candles, preferably a daughter, if she is at least a bas mitzvah. So if she is uh, above the 12 year old, so it's uh, it's like woman of the house, so she can light if no parents. So. If 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 wife is out, she's uh, whatever, whatever whatever she is, so he must light the candles. So somebody must light light the candle in the house. I mean, if if uh, if if somebody staying home, if they all uh, went to somebody else, so they're not obligated. Okay, we're going to learn about it. Okay, exceptions. <clears throat> Number two exceptions. The following I. Um, exemptions. I'm sorry, exemptions. The following I exempt exempt from the mitzvah of lighting the candles and thus cannot light on behalf of the other a deaf mute a person who is mentally incompetent and minor so uh, since uh, you you learned some uh, i think you told me kiddushin right kiddushin mm -hmm. so yeah i am i'm sure that that you you saw this uh, this condition so these three category of people they um they um they're not obligated to do mitzvahs. So deaf, mute. So to, in today's world, it's not exactly uh, the same as uh, when the Shulchan Aruch was written or the Talmud was written. So they, they have a way to train these people. So basically the deaf, mute, the, they, they say deaf, mute because there were no, no way to, to teach them. So they like, uh, so I mean, they are like, were very like, uh, I don't know, like slow. This dead, right. deaf mute. They they didn't know what's going on. I mean, if he if he cannot hear, how can can you explain? So today they have sign languages, stuff like that. So they they can communicate, and uh, some of them are very smart. Okay, person mentally incompetent. So since he is not obligated in uh, mitzvah, so he cannot include you. And it's also very important uh, um, thing. So only the one who is obligated in a mitzvah on your level can include you. If he's obligated, uh, for example, if you're obligated something to do biblically and another person rabbinically, so he cannot uh, include you. But you can include him. Right. So that's, uh, okay. okay, we're going to learn about it. Uh, however, some individuals have a custom that uh, all girls, three years of old and older, light uh, their own Shabbos candles. So that's a uh, very popular custom. So that's uh, when the girl, uh, when boy turns three, they give him a haircut. Mm -hmm. They call it up sharing. Right? It's very a big, very big celebration. So until now, for three years, he has this long hair like a girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now it's like, and then he, he's running around. Now, now he became three. So is this a custom or a law? No, no, it's, it's, it's not a law. It's a custom. It's a custom. It's a custom. Yeah, yeah, it's a tradition. Yeah, that's what we do. Right. And uh, and girls start start lighting candles, and, 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 and unless they are very like uh, childish and they, they cannot uh, light the candles, so of course you know, we're not going to allow them to play with fire. But basically, that's that's what we do. Okay, they may not, however, exempt uh, an adult until they reach ma maturity. Of course, we, we, and she, she she can light the, these five years or seven year old girl can light the candles. And she can say bracha and everything, and everybody answer amen. But it does not mean that she can include his father. Right. 
because she is not obligated. Okay. Uh, she is not obligated in mitzvahs in general because she is not a 12 year old. Okay. Number two, a blind woman, although technically exempt, may light the candles with a bracha. Interesting. She too benefits from the light since it enables those who assist her to find their way around. However, if she has a husband or lives with other people, one of them should light the candles and recite the bracha. So the blind woman, is, uh, it says that, um, so in, in general we say bracha only when, when de we derive some benefit. So if, if we don't derive any benefit, so we, can, uh, we cannot say the bracha. So in the case of this blind woman, in the case of this blind woman, she's deriving uh, uh, benefit from somebody who is helping her. So she, she needs to go from one room to another, so they can lead her, so that's how she derives benefit. But if somebody else is available, let them light. Okay. So continue part three, adult children. So if you have any questions, always stop me. Uh, if yeah, not. Yeah, no, okay. Um, okay. So far, so good. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, okay. So adult adult children. We have a pre um, we have previously mentioned that with the candle lighting of one member of the household, the entire household fulfill its obligation. Therefore, the children of the household do not have to light their own candles. So, Mincha, if, you, if, if girls want, let them light. If they're too childish, so, the, I mean, uh, don't, don't let them. Right? However, this is true only if they are home for Shabbos, since they are then considered part of the, part of the household. Interesting, right? If they are not home for Shabbos, they are not considered to, uh, to be part of the household for that Shabbos. So yeah. this uh, girl went uh, to sleep over to her friends. Okay. Right? And they must consequently light their own candles. So this uh, 10 years old girl, so she went to uh, sleep over to, to her friend right, from her class. And uh, so she, she's not, now she's not part of this household uh, where, where she lives. Right? So she has to light the candles where she is now. The rule for their, um, for their fulfilling their obligation when they are not home, Shabbos are as follows. Okay, so basically more, most of the time they include it in that household, not in my household. So if my daughter went to, to, to her girlfriend, so she, she is not part of my household for the Shabbos. She is a part of that household. Okay, number one. At, um, at the home of a friend. A. If boy or a girl went to another family for an entire Shabbos, he or she becomes part of that household and fulfills the obligation with the candle lighting of that household. Right? So somebody has to light uh, in that household. Somebody. B. If they are merely eating in a friend's house but are sleeping at home, they fulfill the obligation with the candle lighting with, um, with the candles which are lit in their own home because of sleeping because of the sleeping in this it case matter what time she comes home <sighs> I let she comes home okay we we go on, yeah yeah you're you're right 100 we, percent we're going to talk about it she has to be derive some benefit exactly 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 so one second in this case, they are still considered part of their own household, meaning that she sleeps here. Okay. So part two. So first one uh, at uh, at the home of a friend. Part two. Uh, number two in yeshiva or seminary. So now they they stay on over for sure, right? So it's not like they eating in one place and sleeping in another place. Yeah. A. <clears throat> in a case where a ma um, where many yeshiva students eat together in a dining hall. One of them should light the candles with a bracha on behalf of the entire student body. So it's very simple. Right? Thus, uh, they will all have fulfilled the obligation of uh, lighting the candles uh, for Kavod Shabbos. So Kavod is uh, uh, respect. Right? Uh, if the room in which the individual stu student sleeps requires light for Shabbos, he should uh, make sure to leave light uh, light on the on uh, light on there for the sake of shalom bias. 
a peaceful home, see above chapter one, however, no bracha is made. So basically, even if he leaves the uh, light in, uh, uh, in in his closet, for example, right, and, or if he in his re restroom, and it's enough for him to to walk around the the whole room, so that's enough. Of course, he does not say bracha, but uh, for sholom bias, it's enough. Sholom bias means that may maybe there are two, two or three or four boys in in one room, right? So they <laughs> then they're going to stumble. Uh, uh, around. Okay. So, bring peace even in like a dorm room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sholom Bais, it's a peace in the house. As we said last time, it's uh, between uh, you and uh, whoever is uh, lives with you, right? Yeah. Stays with you. So <clears throat> commentary. Not, uh, it is advisable though to use uh, one uh, only electric light since candles left unattended in a dormitory room a frequently a fire hazard, of course. I mean, uh, they're not, not going to allow to them to take candles, and they always uh, uh, tell in in the hotels in the Jewish hotel, don't even think about uh, lighting the candles in the room. Right. But we, we always do. <laughs> but we do it in the most Jewish hotels. Where are they? Uh, they do, all of the hotels. I mean, they they, do. they don't oh, tell us what to do. Yeah. I mean, we, we do it in a safe way. We we uh, you know, using this uh, tea light. Candles, you know the small ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, they're very safe. And we put it on uh, on a plate, and this plate in uh, uh, my wife wraps in uh, al aluminum foil. Yeah. So it's uh, okay. So, but uh, so we we're very careful, basically. Okay. Um, okay. B, yeshiva student who eats in his parents' house but sleeps in the yeshiva. Fulfills his candle obligation with uh, the mother's lighting because he, he eats meal. Okay. If, however, the room in uh, in which he sleeps require light, he should light the there uh, without bracha. So, um, so basically, uh, I mean, they they they're not saying, but uh, as 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 we said, uh, there are two two reasons for lighting candles. One is a COVID Shabbos, and another one is for for Shalom Bais. So here for COVID Shabbos it was lit uh, in her in his uh, in his mother's house, right? Right. When he ate uh, for for COVID Shabbos, and here for Shalom Bais he lights in uh, in uh, in his uh, dormitory. Okay. So it could be like okay. I don't know if you ever saw or you have one. There is a Shabbos lights. Yeah. Okay. So so, so that, that that's that's more than enough. Whatever he likes, that's more than enough. So he can walk around, he can undress, he can yeah. dress. So, yeah. Okay, continue. C. In the case of yeshiva students who uh, eats by a friend and not in a dining hall and sleeps in yeshiva, <clears throat> all authorities who, um, there are authorities who feel that he fulfilled his candle lighting obligation with the candle of his host, meaning wherever he ate. This is because he is considered part of the household where he eats, even though he does not sleep there. But uh, this uh, eating part is very important, right? So for uh, yeah, okay, you gotta, you gotta get like some benefit out of it. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So it's it's a mitzvah. It's not a, just important. It's a mitzvah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so number four: husbands and wives. We have previously mentioned that uh, when one member of the household lights um, shabbos candles, every member of the household fulfills his obligation. We have also stated that this is true only if they are spending shabbos at home. It's very interesting, right? However, a husband or wife, however, a husband or wife may light on behalf of the other, even if the spouse is not home for shabbos. As long as uh, the lighting will be done uh, in their own house, it's very interesting. Nevertheless, even though the absent spouse fulfills his obligation to light the candles for Kavod Shabbos in this manner, he uh, or she uh, should uh, still see that there is a light, a light where he she is uh, is staying for the sake of Shalom Bais, a peaceful home. So basically, is uh, if uh, um, for example, the husband in a, in, is in a hospital, right? right? So his wife can uh, light the candles for him 
in the, in, in the house. No problem. Or she's out. She she went to to his visit her mother, elderly mother. She's staying over, for example, in that house. So he's uh, uh, lighting for for her in the house. But this yeah. this connection is only between husband and wife. It's a special yeah. bond. It's not between uh, 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 parents and children. Okay. It's very interesting. Okay, if either the husband, if neither, if neither the husband nor wife is at home for Shabbos, and then not spending Shabbos together, each has his own obligation, each has its independent obligation to light candles. For example, he is at one place, she is another place, so both of them have to light and none of them can, can light for, for each other. They can light for each other, for, 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 for one another, only when one of them is at home. One of them, okay. Okay, so number five, visiting. If husband, uh, if husband, wife, and family are guests away from home for Shabbos, they technically fulfill their candle lighting requirements with the light of a woman of the house in which they are staying. I, uh, so because they, they became a household for uh, household members for, for this specific Shabbos. It is customary, however, that all married women light their own candles and recite bracha. Okay, so that's uh, so it doesn't matter how many people there. Right. So, for, for example, for, so for family, every woman should recite her own. Yes, and and light, light. So, so, light so if five families got together, so it's going to be like uh, five uh, lighting. So, mm -hmm. but uh, so if, this for, is just for family, or like let's say somebody gets invited, let's say a woman gets invited to the Shabbat house, like I don't know, just friend. So this friend can can light her own candles. It's 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 up to it, the, the tradition is the way the way I always saw yeah, that. Uh, so you can you can be included, uh, as we said, or you and it's right. preferably that you do your own mitzvah. Why why would you miss on the mitzvah? Right, exactly. So okay. maybe, maybe she like, uh, especially so, uh, women light, light candles right right before Shabbos. Maybe she was under stress. Maybe she she was trying to remember. She, I did did right, I do right. this? Did I do that? So maybe she would forget to, to include her friend and her bracha. And Un, okay. unintentionally. Right, right. Yeah, you understand. So me, me personally, in our family, we never take chances. So we say, oh no, brachas. We light our own candles. Whenever we invite it, we, we come with our own, our own candles, the steel lights candles, with our plates. So we don't don't bother anybody. Just tell us where, where we can put, we can light. That's it. Right. However, since uh, the hostess will be lighted candles, those uh, of the guests are, are really so superfluous. Okay. Therefore, the guests may uh, uh, may may only make a bracha if the candles add more light to the room. In which the meal is eaten, if the um, or if she lights in a, uh, otherwise, just one second, or if she lights in an otherwise unlit room, which will be used for showers. So basically, so what what they're trying to say? So these uh, these candles can the, these lights of the candles cannot be superfluous. For example, the big issue, the biggest issue. I'm not sure why people doing that. For example, if you go in hotel and there's Shabbaton, right, and they tell you light here, well, whatever they light, and they don't want light, they don't tell you light uh, at, at the table when you, where you're going to eat. They said that they tell you light at the lobby. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's useless lighting. That, that does it add to to your Shabbos? Absolutely not. So that's exactly the, the we're talking about. So light, uh, so it can light next to your candles. Right. So it brings, for sure, it brings more light. Maybe it's not that visible, but for sure it brings more light. Or light in another room where it's going to bring uh, more light, uh, uh, otherwise unlit room, as I said. But as we said, it's dangerous. So just uh, leave it in the kitchen, whatever, but by your lights, so everything is under control. Don't... Uh, right. If if you invited to somebody else's house, don't drive them crazy, right? Okay. okay. So <clears throat> number six, eating out. If a couple is invited, so that the, the, this is the more uh, like uh, common, I think. This is number six. If couple is invited out, 
for a Friday night meal, but return home to sleep. The woman should light candles if she, in her own home. However, she must uh, derive some benefit from these candles, which she, she lights. Therefore, she should either leave home after having uh, derived some benefit from the candlelight. For example, she could uh, daven next to the candles, right? So you, you use the light. Or she should use uh, candles, which will burn long enough to provide light when they return home from their meal. She may then derive her benefit from them. For example, by eating next to the candle. Okay. However, if uh, for some reason she cannot light the candles here on home, she may light in her hostess house. So, first of all, so, so here is the thing. So, if, if they just invite, which is, uh, which as, as we said, uh, especially in Brooklyn and all other things, uh, all, all other places when people live uh, nearby, so walking distance, right? So, why, why should, should I sleep there? <laughs> Why should they like uh, bother them? Just go home to, to sleep, right? So they, they say preferably if you want light in your house, derive some benefit, pray, or you, women usually say take a limb, some prayers, but 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 she has to read from, from the book. Otherwise it's useless, you, know? you understand? So to, 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 to practically use this light, uh, one thing, or if she, if she does not have time, so make sure that these uh, lights are going to be there when you come home. So it's not so easy, just on a practical level, with uh, wax candles, but it's easy with, uh, with uh, what is it, with, ol uh, with uh, olive oil candles, with yeah. oil candles. So, I mean, you, you just put a little more oil and it's going to, 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 to burn for three, four, five hours, whatever you need. But if they're afraid of, for whatever reason, so many... Many people are nervous to to leave the candles uh, in the house when they're not home, which is understandable. No problem, no pressure. So she can light in that uh, in that house, yeah. which is uh, also fine. So we we actually go by by, by the second approach. We, we light uh, we go out. We light in that house, and uh, the reason I uh, why because we always arrive earlier and. Uh, um, with the candlelight in wives accept uh, the Shabbos, so, but uh, in this case we can drive there, for example, or take a bus. You understand? At, at least one way. We can drive there, leave, leave the car there, so, and, uh, and she does not accept Shabbos, so she can light the candles afterwards. Right. Okay. So that's, uh, that's also, that, that's why we go by second opinion. Okay. Okay, number seven, hospitals. Hospital rooms. Okay, <clears throat> and it says if woman is in the hospital on Friday night and her husband is at home, she must light candles in her house. One second. If woman is in the hospital on Friday night and her husband is at home, he must. Sorry, I apologize. He must light the candles in 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 the house. So he's uh, as as we said, she's out. She must. Accordingly, uh, the woman too has technically fulfilled her obligation to light uh, with her husband lighting at home. So, because as we said, there is special bond be between husband and wife. Okay. Right. And he's home. However, since it is customary for a woman to light the candles, she may, if she wishes, light it in a hospital. Since many hospitals forbid the lighting the candles, the woman may extinguish the electric light in her room and then turn it uh, on again with um, with express intent that it be for the mitzvah of Shabbos. Okay. However, since she has um, technically fulfilled her obligation with the uh, husband's lighting, and moreover, since uh, some authorities rule that the bracha cannot be recited over the electric lights, it is better that she not recite bracha when she turns them on. Okay, so let's try to summarize. So technically, as we said, she she fulfilled her obligation when her husband uh, lit at home. There is no problem. Mm -hmm. But she f she feels that she's missing, right? So she wants to lie. So in in uh, in her hospital room, of course, they're not going to uh, allow because it's dangerous. Uh, the oxygen tanks, 
Okay, maybe in some room, maybe some room uh, they would allow. Maybe yes, maybe no. Probably yeah. no. I don't think so. I mean, some somebody would have to watch the lights. I don't think they're not. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So we don't we don't go by that opinion. But basically, even with the light, we're going to 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 see there is some opinion that even uh, elect with electric light, one can fulfill his obligation. Mm -hmm. So she turns on the light and turns it off, but without saying bracha. Okay. So and uh, it's basic approach. If you're not sure. Uh, if you need to say bracha, you you don't say. You just right. don't say. Okay. So be on the safe side. Okay. Continue. If your husband is not home for Shabbos, his lighted cannot exempt her. For example, she's in a hospital and he's, uh, uh, I don't know, in a business trip somewhere. Right? He didn't come home yet. His lighted cannot exempt her from her own obligation. So even though he lights in his uh, hotel room, wherever he is, so she's still obligated to light her own candles. She should therefore light the candles if possible. If not, she may use electric lights, as I previously explained. Most Muslim rule that she may recite the bracha in this case. So in uh, in uh, in the first case, when um, when we say that the husband is at home and she's uh, she's doing something extra, so basically they say do not say bracha because it's question. Here, most Paskim said she can recite the bracha, but not on all electric lights. Right? I'm just adding. However, Hagaon, Rav Moshe Feinstein, that's all, rules that bracha cannot be recited on over electric lights. And uh, I just want to add to this, uh, so especially on these LED lights. So many in many hospitals, many, many houses even, they, they substituted this. Uh, incandescent bulbs to the LED bulbs, right? right? So it's not fire for sure. Incandescent, it is fire. LED is not fire. So for sure you cannot say bracha. Mm -hmm. So no, nobody agreed to that. Okay. Okay, so basically, so when when there is a, especially when we go by, by Moshe Feinstein, right? So he said, no, no, yeah. no problem. Okay. And he said no, right? Yeah, yes, he said no. Okay, okay, can I just so, okay, so but but still the, the mitzvah is done. Whether or not you, you say the bracha, for example, if you if you don't uh, if you don't remember if you say uh, or, or 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 for sure you forgot to say bracha when you were you were putting on tefillin, so it's counted as you do the mitzvah. Nothing is missing. You you're not obligated to put tefillin second time with the bracha. Right. You understand? Okay. So number number eight. Uh, Shabbos in a hotel. Okay, so that's interesting. If a family spends Shabbos in a hotel, it is preferable that the wife should light the candles in their private room or at their table or in the dining room. But basically, if you go to Shabbatons, I, I never went to Shabbatons, right? but uh, the, the way I understand from other people. So, um, so they would not allow you to, and they, they, they know that, that these Jews, and uh, in Jewish hotel, non-Jewish, they know exactly that everybody wants to light in their room. So they explicitly forbid it, right? And they explicitly forbid uh, to light at the Shabbos table because a kid can uh, knock off these ca candles. Yeah, you understand? So, I mean, they, they, they tell you where to light. And it's not exactly what we need to do. Okay. However, if this is not possible, she should light candles anywhere in a dining room where some additional illumination will be provided for the diners. So that's, uh, I mean, they, usually they, 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 they put some table like on, on a site. So I, I, I've been to the hotels, but uh, like we uh, with, with uh, many Jews, but we were like ours, like separate, separate part. Okay, so provide the diners. Regrettably, uh, hotels often re uh, request that the woman light candles on a table too distant to provide illumination to any of the diners that's uh, like usually like i saw these poor people in israel like uh, i mean uh, not poor uh, whatever they, they, these ladies they would light next to the um, reception desk so and then they say bracha and they say and they, they, they leave they, they they light the candles late. so what benefit no benefit so it's a bracha in vain. So it's better for her not to light the candles. Right. 
You understand? Um, one second. Do you need on any diners or light in a small room other than the main dining room? Okay. Uh, this practice is not according to halacha. So whatever they they, they saw in a in a small room, like in a separate area, as I said, next to reception. So this practice is not according to halacha, since the candles neither illuminate the Shabbos table nor any other dar uh, darkened room. Right. So I mean, they superfluous for sure, and the blessing made there is unfortunately in vain, and it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's a big big problem. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Not to uh, use Hashem's name in vain. Mm -hmm. Big problem. So basically, but uh, just uh, before we continue, as we said, there is always a solution. So if she takes a Tehillim Vizkyo and she prays, right, next to these candles, there is no problem. Right. But usually people do not know and they don't, don't do these things. Unfortunately. Okay. So number two. So we're talking about uh, Shabbos in a hotel. If it is possible to light candles in a dining room, it's not possible to light candles in the dining room. It is best uh, that she not light candles at all, but rather fulfill her obligation by turning the electric light in her room or just outside it. Well, whatever she is, like in a, in a restaurant also. So that it will provide illumination when the door is open. Okay. Most poskim rule that uh, the bracha can be recited on the, uh, on the electric light bulb. Okay, but as we said, uh, we, we don't do it. As previously mentioned, however, uh, Hagaon, Rav Moshe Feinstein, that's all, does not agree with that rule. So we don't uh, play with fire, especially today light, it uh, have nothing to do with uh, what the light uh, bulbs they're talking about. So no matter what you... you Let's say I'm alone, right? When I light candles, I have to have them lit somewhere where I'm going to derive benefit from them. Yeah, where, right? where, where, where are you going to eat, for example? Yeah, Yeah, but the, where I eat is usually the same place I study at night. <laughs> so, oh, so and, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but but studying is deriving benefit. What do you mean? Of course. Right, but the study, but, but the candles are not like 24-hour candles. They're like two-and-a-half-hour candles. So, like, I also have a lamp. Like right next, right, right opposite where they keep, like not a lamp, but like a little table light. Uh -huh. So on one side I have the candles, and the other side I leave the, the table light on. Is that uh -huh. okay? Okay, so okay, so you you you're going a little ahead, but I, I I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. Okay, so uh, so we actually we, we can combine these two things into one. So before okay. before lighting your candles, you turn off you this light. Okay. This table uh, lamp, right? And and okay. in your mind, you say that I'm uh, I'm lighting the, the the this lamp in a Lakovit Shabbos for 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 uh, yes okay. for Shabbos and and then you light candles. So it, it's okay. like uh, you 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 can light many candles. So this lamp in your mind it's like another candle, and then okay. you say bracha on your candles, and you okay. you, you you have a mind that. Um, that it should uh, cover uh, cover the the table lamp. The so table that lamp. and then I turn on the table lamp. No, 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 no. First, first you do a table lamp, and then uh, uh, that, uh, then okay. the candles. Turn because off, turn off the table lamp, have it in mind, turn it on, and then do the candle. Exactly. That's it. That's okay. it. That's it. So okay. okay. That's so that's uh, that's exactly what we do. So we we have this uh, uh, dining lights. So so we turn them off, turn on. And uh, light the candles, and uh, so this, uh, and then keep keep in mind that the, this lighting, the, this bracha, also include this big light. Right. So that's uh, that's the, the solution. Okay, good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's not only good; it's must know. Must know right? <laughs> okay. So number nine, camps. Married couple eating in the public dining area, um, for example, at the uh, at the camp. Should follow the procedure outlined uh, above regarding the hotels. Campers uh, should follow the procedure outlined in Shiva student. Okay, so I mean, married couple is a difference. So basically, she has to light where they can derive benefit. But uh, but in, same in camps. Uh, it's not uh, that I ever been to camp of, uh, that they're talking about. But uh, it's same as hotel, just outside, right? Right. 
Okay. Continue? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, 10 minutes. Got it. Okay, number three. The proper time for lighting candles. Okay. Okay, number one. The most common observed time of the candle lighting is 18 minutes before Shkia, sunset. Right. So, okay. In Yerushalayim, however, the custom is to light 40 minutes before sunset. Right? So, when you're in Yerushalayim, so the, the Shabbos approach very fast. Very fast, right. the sunset. Because you, you're closer to equator. Right? That's why. Okay. If, uh, for any reason, <clears throat> the lighting was delayed, one must still light until the sunset. But oh, My introduction page is a little different because right? that is number two, and then the first one. Okay. So okay. So, so please, the, the, yep. new, the new edition has number one saying, uh, so like the third chapter, time for lighting Shabbos candles. So the first one it says reminding the woman to light candles, mm -hmm. and then the second one is preferred time for candle lighting. So I don't know if you if you even have that in your book, reminding the woman to light candles. Uh, yes, yes, it's it's you know. it's number two. So they they, they uh, oh okay, okay. So they switched it. Okay, yeah. all right. So let's start. With, let's start with where you you started. So the most okay. Time is their time. Okay. Right. So so we, we said there are eighteen minutes. So basically, if he if he or she did not light the eighteen minutes before, they still have this eighteen minutes to light. Right. right? So it's uh, before before the sunset. Um, if for any reason the lighting was delayed. One may still light the, until the sunset, but one must be sure to finish before the the sun sets. So right. meaning, if she wants to light or he wants to light seven candles or twenty candles, right? So make sure that you finish before the sunset. Right. So and uh, the big blessing of, of to the person who starts uh, before, accept the Shabbos earlier than eighteen minutes, five minutes, ten minutes earlier, whatever you can. Right. Okay, number two, a husband. Um, if husband sees that his wife is late, oh no no, okay, I apologize. So the so the the one the that you said is, is the first was to to remind uh, his wife. Yeah, that's that's his obligation, right? That's uh, that's his obligation. Okay, so number two in my book and probably number three in your book. Um, if husband sees that his wife is late, he should light the Shabbos candle himself. So she's running late. She the, the kids are crying. That this and they want, don't want to like to take a shower and this and that. So okay, so that's that's what he must do. He must light the candles. Okay, number three or number four probably in your book. It is proper uh, that when the time comes to light candles, the husband announced to his wife, "It's now time to light." Okay, maybe it was number four. So basically, he he's responsible. So a man of the house is responsible for everything everything that's going on in the house. You understand? She, husband usually don't have that many responsibility. A woman does. So if she if she is late, so that, that's uh, what he's for, right? What, right. So okay. So number one, earliest time. If one wishes to use uh, to usher the Shabbos earlier than eighteen minutes before the sunset, one may do so. The earliest time uh, that one may light the Shabbos candles in an hour and a quarter before the sunset. This amount uh, of time is referred to sages plug hamincha. So if you if you check my myzmanim.com, so it says uh, it has this uh, time plug hamincha. So it's uh, when they say an hour and a quarter of seasonal hours, meaning uh, it's uh, different uh, in the summer and in the winter. So, for example, when uh, when this Corona stuff started, and everybody were playing uh, praying at home, that's exactly where I was uh, uh, accepting Shabbos, <laughs> the earliest opportune time, right? An hour and a quarter before. Okay. Note, an hour and a quarter ref uh, referred here is uh, calculated in term as uh, seasonal hour. So seasonal, as we said, uh, a seasonal hour is the one twelfth of the uh, daylight period of the day. This is derived by uh, dividing the amount of time between the sunrise and sunset of that, that way, day by 12. This amount uh, of the time is standard uh, in standard minutes, 
will vary according to the day of, uh, and the season. So basically, they they take time from uh, uh, sunrise and, until the sunset, and let's say it's uh, I don't know eight time eight hours seven nine hours whatever, right? And they divide by by uh, by by twelve. So every hour is not going to have sixty minutes, right? Every hour would would have I don't know like four forty five minutes. Let's say. You understand? That's what we call seasonal hours. So, uh, but uh, this uh, mysmarim.com, they actually uh, did a favor to us, for us, and they do this, uh, all of the calculations for us. So you can rely on that website. So you don't, you don't have to know all of these things. I mean, uh, but, but generally, that's uh, for general knowledge, it's, uh, it's uh, seasonal hours. Okay, number two. If one lit the candles to usher, um, ta- usher in Shabbos earlier than Plaga Mincha, the lighting is invalid and must be done over at the proper time. You understand? So you you so cannot. Plaga Mincha is the earliest that you can light. Like. Yes. So one and one and a quarter hours. This Plaga Mincha is the earliest time. If he uh, did it earlier, so it uh, basically there is no connection to Shabbos whatsoever. Right. So it's like I mean you can you can light uh, candles on Friday or or Sunday or Monday. There is no problem. You can you want to light candles even during the day. It's your business. If they uh, yeah you can light candles. Okay, but it's, but it's not in honor of Shabbos. That's the issue. The bracha too must be repeated. So he said bracha. That bracha was in vain. What can we do? It must be repeated. If one is in not the, in my book, it says. There's a dispute among authorities whether the braha must be repeated. Okay. So, but your book says it must be repeated. Yes. Okay. okay. So That's basically, but uh, okay. So all right. Uh, thank you very much for correcting. So uh, for letting me know. So basically, I mean, uh, the the way I understand it, uh, even though there is dispute, um, I would say I don't know. I I, I would say to repeat it because it was not the I social. Repeat it, yeah. I mean, I think your book is older, so it follows more Shafinsky. Um, no, 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 no. It's 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 exactly the same. But I mean, whatever. So we we're going to go by by t- what your book said. Okay. You understand? But I, I learned other yeah. books also. So based on on my other knowledge, I would say say it with a bracha. Okay. In 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 this specific case, because he did not do mitzvah when he uh, lived right. before. If one is not uh, sure whether the candle lighting was performed in a proper time, the candles should be relit without bracha. Oh, that's that's a different case. I, he did not ho- know. Uh, he didn't have internet stuff like that, so he did not know what time is uh, plaga minka and uh, go go now calculate these hours. Okay, right. In this case, someone other than uh, that woman who already lit the lit should relight the candles because uh, if the first lighting was actually valid, it is now sh- Shabbos for her, and she may not light the candles. So we're talking about um, this uh, this questionable situation. So she does not know when. For example, uh, even if she if she know if she lit the candles and she did not check the time. So she was so busy. So, so she she lit the candles and now she does not know was it after plug mincha or before the plug mincha. Right. So since the, there is p- still possibility, so we, we don't know. So there is still possibility that she lit. Uh, uh, after plug mincha, meaning a proper time, so we we don't tell her to 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 extinguish the light. So ask somebody else to if, if she has husband or grown up daughter or somebody else in the house. So let them uh, to extinguish and relate. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I would say just uh, let it uh, let it run. Don't don't touch it. Because if she did it correctly, right? If she did it, did it correctly, so she's. Uh, so now she she she's going to extinguish fire and Shabbos, which is absolutely okay. forbidden.